Okay, welcome folks. Welcome to this new webinar. And in this webinar here, we're going to discuss uh, our candida diet. We're going to discuss should you eat or should you not eat fats in the candida diet and which kind of fatty acid you should have. Now, this is Nicola Zanetti from beatthebeast.com and now we are ready to start. So, you want to start this candida diet because you're suffering with all of the horrible problems with candida, the itching, the discharges, like the bloating, all of this kind of horrible situation, but you don't know what to do exactly. Now, in this video here, I'm going to give you some insights on precisely what you need to do on the candida diet. Now, you need to grab pen and paper and stay until the end. This is a serious webinar. This is a webinar in which we go deep, so you will need to take notes. So, please stay until the end because in the end I will recap everything that we have discussed so you can have like a much deeper understanding on the topic. With this out of the way, let's now discuss this webinar here. So this is a comprehensive webinar where we use real science to define and describe the problem. So in this webinar here, we're going to discuss the candida diet, we're going to discuss the relationship between fatty acid and the candida diet, and we're going to do so by using real science. One of the biggest issues in people who want to understand a little bit about candida is the huge amount of conflicting advice that you can find on the internet. The truth is there is no such thing as conflicting advice. There are people who read real science and people who do not read real science. Because as I will show you in the end where I give you all of the references, what I'm about to say is obvious once you understand how Candida works. Now, obviously this webinar here will go in depth. So this is, web this is a webinar only for people who are looking for real solution, are not looking for shortcuts or anything like that. So if you are lazy, if you are a cheater, if you want to look for a next miracle remedy, all of the kind of things that do not work, please click away, go away from my video. And uh, once you have seen that all of those methods do not work, maybe come back. Okay, so this is for people who are serious about beating Candida and want to develop deep understanding because being serious, following the steps, which are going to be a lot of difficult steps and do it in a very like positive and powerful way is the only solution against your Candida issue. I'm afraid if you're probably here, you have already tried many miracle remedies and they did not work. So now that we have this out of the picture, if you're still here, let's begin our webinar. So first of all, I need to show you, let me show the full, full of it, medical disclaimer. So pause to read the medical disclaimer. After you have done that, you can watch the video. Please do not watch the video without reading the disclaimer. Now, Let's discuss now the Candida diet and to create a diet that does make sense with Candida, we need first of all to define our opponent. So to define Candida because like every kind of microorganism has some different challenges. You always need to remember one thing. Microorganisms which can cause disease are called pathogens and pathogens have been around in the earth for millions of years. So the reason why they are still around is because they are very adept in survival. So the kind of challenge that we have with Candida are not the same kind of challenge you will have with a bacteria like Klebsiella or with a parasite. OK, so there will be different kind of challenges. So the first step in your journey against Candida is to understand a little bit about the biology of the yeast. That doesn't mean you need to be able to write a biology book on the topic, but you need to understand some of the important challenges. So let's begin to define Candida and let's begin to define in a very simple situation, the two forms of candida. There is one form of candida which is harmless, and this is the yeast-like form. There is one form of candida which is the reason why you get all of the symptoms, which is the fungal candida. So, yeast candida is harmless, fungal candida gives you the symptoms, and it's the dangerous one. Now, is candida a common problem for a lot of people? The answer is yes. I would say in the West, because that's where we have the data from, 70% of the human population have candida in their body. This does not mean that candida is going to give symptoms and issue to everybody. Actually, it only gives symptoms between 1 and 2% of the 70% of people who do have candida in the body. 
So what's the issue here? Why is it that most people don't have any kind of problem with Candida and some people struggle for life with Candida? The problem is that when Candida is able to switch from the yeast form to the fungal form, this is when you start to get the problem. Now, what are some of the reasons in which Candida goes from the yeast form to the, to the fungal form? Now, I'm going to show you here on this slide here just to give you an idea. Now, on your right, there's... Um, yeast-like cells, they look like eggs. This is the form of candida which is naturally normally present in 70% of the population. This form here is not a big deal. Now look at the left when I see, you see like pseudo hypha. Look all of these long lines. These are lines which are root-like structures called hyphae. This is when candida goes fungal and it literally digs holes into your body looking for nutrients. So obviously when candida can do that, uh, this is much more of a challenge because now it's actively damaging your body. It's actually looking for all of these nutrients here. Now, to go back to the, to the, the previous idea. So now I've shown you yeast and fungal candida. Why is it sometimes candida going from yeast candida to fungal candida? The three, the four main reasons, the three main reasons that I'm going to cover right now, they're like about seven, eight reasons, but the three ones that I want to cover right now is number one, if your diet is high in sugar. Why is that the case? Because fungal candida, this candida here, is way more competent, is way better than the yeast candida when there is a lot of sugar. It's simply a better form. So given the possibility and given the food available like in a very like sugary diet, fungal candida is better. It does survive for longer. It is much better. So therefore candida, it will optimize itself to go into the fungal form. So obviously something at the level of the diet should be done. But if you are in this video here, you already know about sugar. Let's go back. The second thing is a stressful period. Now, there are two things in your body which are very linked and these two things in your body which are basically keeping candida into the yeast form. So, sorry, the two things that keep candida into the yeast form are number one, your immune system, number two, your own friendly bacteria. Obviously, if your immune system is not working properly or if there is something called dysbiosis, like you see here, dysbiosis, which means an imbalance between good bacteria and bad bacteria, then candida is way more prone to go from the yeast form to the fungal form. Now, obviously, stress is a major problem for the immune system because think in these terms over here. The way your body sees stress is like... Imagine like we were back 15,000 years and we were still like at the time of the cave age. Now meeting like a bear or a lion or a wolf in the wild was a big deal because at that time humans were actively battling against animals which were stronger and more adept to fighting than we are. So in that scenario, the human body, and not just the human body, but the body of an animal, has adapted what is called the fight or flight response, which is a response of the body which is designed to keep you alive when the time of need is, um, is there. So obviously in a fight or flight response, what part of your body will have priority? Will be the blood to your muscle, the blood to your lungs, like all of these parts here in which you can get more energy to be able to run away. Now, the immune system is not a priority. The digestive system is not a priority in a fight or flight response. So think in these terms over here. If you are in a society like the, the typical Western society where you get consistent stress due to the fact that we have consistent stimulation from everywhere, obviously you can feel like you're consistently on a fight or flight response. Is this okay for your body? Absolutely not. In fact, uh, there are papers published on PubMed, which is the most reputable website when it comes to research, which they prove one very important point, which is 70% of the chronic conditions like uh, cancer, autoimmunity, all of these issues happen after two, two consequences. The first one is trauma. So trauma has a major role in the starting of, 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 a, of, um, of a disease. And the second one is a stressful period. So obviously stress is a major trigger for candida. So all of this, it seems that it's pointing towards the idea of 
if you want to win your journey against candida, you need to take good care of your immune system. This is paramount for you, okay? So whatever you want to do with your journey against candida, you don't need to listen to my solution. That's okay. But it all goes down. What are you doing today to take care of your immune system? This is the most important part. A healthy immune system is the bane of the existence of candida. Always remember this sentence. No matter what you do in your life, no matter what you do in your journey against candida, always remember a healthy immune system is the bane of the existence of candida. Now, with this out of the way, obviously, we need to take it to the next stage. So if the goal of our candida diet is a healthy immune system, we need to understand what we should do in our diet in this specific journey. And this is where all the fake gurus, they don't do their job properly, because what does the fake guru say? They simply say something like, cut out sugar and take an antimicrobial, which is not technically wrong, but it's very far from the, the actual real solution. Why? Because candida is a complex problem. Can you apply a simple solution to a complex problem? The answer is absolutely not. So we need to take things to the next stage. So in this video here, I want to cover the, the, the issue of fats or fatty acid. So now we shall discuss fatty acid and the immune system. What is the relationship between what kind of fat you eat and what is your immune system responding to? Which is a topic that very few people cover, but it is paramount in your journey against candida. You already know everything about sugar. Let's take it to the next stage and discuss a bit fatty acid. So. I'm going to make it this smaller so you can read everything with me. So when your immune system responds to candida, it will need to go through a process called inflammation. What is inflammation? It is the process that the immune system uses to bring the immune system to the site of the infection. So let's say you have genital candida. Now, we need the immune system to go into the genital area and fight and try to destroy the candida colonies that you have in the genital areas. How does the immune system do that? Through a process called inflammation, by recruiting all the cells of the immune system and moving all of the nutrients that are needed from the immune system to go there. And then at that point, you can start to get uh, like the battle between the immune system and candida. Now, Keep in mind one thing that acute inflammation, acute inflammation, like I put this in red over here, I'm actually going to make it even better. Acute inflammation is good and we need that when we fight infection. So it is not true that inflammation is all bad. This is what, again, fake gurus sometimes they say. Inflammation is good. Without inflammation, you would die out of an infection. So you want to have inflammation in your body. Acute inflammation is paramount for your life. What you do not want is chronic inflammation. Okay, I'm also going to highlight that for you. Chronic inflammation is a consistent release of inflammatory markers in your body over and over and over again. Why is chronic inflammation an issue? Because it's a major risk factor for basically the most dangerous diseases of a human being, which are autoimmunity, cardiovascular disease, cancer, and a total disruption of your immune system. This is bad. Why is chronic inflammation bad for your immune system? Because simply remember that you do not have infinite amount of resources for the immune system. If the immune system is consistently triggered by this chronic inflammation, there will be a point in which your immune system will start to break down. Because again, you can't have a super high alert immune system over and over and over again. Think in these terms over here. Do you think you could survive if you couldn't ever sleep? Obviously, you couldn't. The same thing applies to the immune system. The immune system is a very powerful tool that we have in our body. But if we consistently trigger the immune system over and over and over again, there will be a point in which the immune system crashes and it goes down and it doesn't work anymore. This is the same reason why consistent chronic stress is not good for your health because chronic stress keeps the immune system up and down, up and down consistently to a point in which the immune system poof, crashes down and it does not work anymore. So chronic inflammation is a major risk factor for your immune system. Now, what is also an issue with candida? The problem is that candida often tends to go into becoming a chronic infection. 
okay? As an example, I was speaking the other day with uh, one of my patients, she bought the, the strategic tailor-made research, and for the last roughly 20 years of her life, she, were, she was battling on and off with genital candida. Why was that a big issue for her? Because first of all, this was consistently triggering chronic inflammation in her body. And in fact, a few years after, she started to develop an autoimmune condition called Hashimoto's. Now, is it guaranteed that Hashimoto was coming from Candida? No, but chronic inflammation as a consequence of Candida is linked to autoimmunity. We have solid data to link this to the development of celiac disease. Could this also be linked to Hashimoto's? I wouldn't doubt it. So I think it's possible. Nevertheless, chronic inflammation, as I was flagging before, is a risk factor for autoimmunity. So the answer, the question that you need to ask yourself is, do I want something in your body which is a major risk factor for autoimmunity? And you obviously know that the answer is no. So chronic inflammation as a response to candida is already an issue when it comes to the response of your body. Then there is also the chronic inflammation as a response to your diet. And this is something we need to cover right now. So let me go back to the uh, slideshow. So, Let's now discuss fats, candida, and the immune system. So we need to start to discuss and introduce two different categories of fatty acid. The first one being omega-6, the second one being omega-3. And you probably, if you are here, you probably already have heard of omega-6 and omega-3. Let me give you like a quick recap in case you're not familiar with the two, these two types of fatty acid. So as a general rule, you can think about omega-6 with the excep exception of GLA, being promoters of inflammation. So omega-6 increase inflammation and omega-3 being reducers of inflammation. So as a general rule, you, in your journey, when you want to avoid chronic inflammation coming from your diet, you really want to pay attention to the omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. When the omega-6 to the omega-3 ratio is in balance, chronic inflammation from your diet is not present. And if you remember what I just said and up until this point, I was saying, Candida is already a, risk, already a risk factor for chronic inflammation. You want to avoid as much as possible to have a secondary risk factor coming from your diet, which is something you have absolute control on. So at the beginning, you don't have full control of candida because it takes time to reduce candida, but you can certainly change your diet to remove one of the two risk factors. So let me give you like some numbers and then we can discuss a little bit a test. So a healthy ratio of omega-6, so 6 being dominant over 3, is less than 3 to 1. I say this again, omega-6 to omega-3 should be less than 3 when it comes to omega-6 are 3 to 1. So 3 times more omega-6 omega than you have of omega-3. Less than that is considered to be healthy. The ideal value is omega-6 1.5 to 1 omega-3. So 6 to 3 ratio, 1.5 to 1 is considered to be ideal. So can you test this to see where you start from? You can absolutely do so. So simply Google omega-6 to omega-3 ratio test. It's usually around $100 or 100 pounds, wherever you live. And it's a very simple prick test. You just basically prick your fingers, send the result back to the lab, and within 15 days, you're gonna have your results. Again, what you're looking for here is less than three to one. Ideally, you wanna go all the way down to 1.5 to one. Let me give you some data now on the typical Western diet to understand the magnitude of the issue that we're facing right now. So science has estimated that the Western diet is already very inflammatory. Estimates that, that the omega-6 to omega-3 ratio in the Western diet is about 15, 1, 5, 2, 1. This is five times more than what's the max risk factor. So it has to be less than 3 to 1, and it's five times more than that, but the ideal is 1.5 to 1, which means it is 10 times higher than the ideal values. And this is bad news. And this is the re this is one of the reasons why people in the Western diet, they get all sorts of chronic disease, diabetes, cancer, 
cardiovascular disease, and so on. All of these are strongly raised when you eat the kind of food that I like to put in the picture, burger and fries, all of these kind of things that are not healthy. This is an issue that we need to address because it is all good and easy when people tell you to cut out sugar, but if you don't understand that this is only one of the steps, and again, it goes back to what I was saying at the beginning, you cannot defeat candida if you don't take like a complex solution to a complex problem. Simple solutions, they do not work. You can cut out all of the sugar of the world, that's not a, that's not going to make massive difference if you keep eating high fatty acid in terms of high omega-6 fatty acid. Why? Because this chronic inflammation will impede your immune system to get better. That's it. So as you can see, all of the lies you've been fed out of up until this point here, they all fade into non-existence once you start to realize that you need to take things to the next stage. And if you are here after 20 minutes, you are already starting to realize how deep you need to go. Luckily, by the end of this video, you're going to have precise steps and like precise foods that you can eat and you should not eat in your journey against candida. Okay, so is everything clear up until at this point here? I hope you understand up until this point that chronic candida is already a major risk factor for chronic inflammation. Plus, if you eat foods that are high in omega-6 and you don't have any idea of your omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, you are in a lot of trouble. Now, with this out of the way, let's go to the next stage. So, and the next stage is to understand that there are no such thing as simple solution for candida because uh, for the simple reason that candida has been around 170 million years, I say this again, 170 million years, which means the time of the dinosaurs, and it's still around today. So obviously candida has already been evolving with in mind all of the kind of evolution to avoid being destroyed in the body of my mammals, like you and me. What's the only real weapon we have against candida? It is deep understanding. So you need to understand the biology of candida because by understanding the biology of candida, you can find solutions that are going to counter all of the curveballs and all of the challenges candida will throw at you. And there will be many of those because candida, again, it doesn't want to be wiped out. And you wouldn't want to do that because candida is kind of like a living being. So you don't want to be wiped out when you are a living being. What is our like counter to that? It is to use real science based on deep understanding to go against candida. Now, so once we have discussed this, let's now see what are the worst offenders when it comes to omega, your omega-6 to omega-3 ratio and what are the best foods that you can eat. So remember what I'm going to show you right now that your goal is less than 3 to 1. Okay, so remember always the 6 to 3 ratio should be less than 3 to 1 as a general idea of what you can eat. So if you start and eat plenty of sunflower seeds, which do have 304 to 1 omega-6 to omega-3, you see that this is an issue. And sunflower seeds, as an example, they are almost non-existent in sugar, they have fats and they have proteins. So they, sh they could potentially be something that you eat uh, in a candida diet because they are low in sugar, right? Nope, that's absolutely wrong because the sheer amount of omega-6 that they have is going to make your immune system going towards too much chronic inflammation, which is not good for the overall balance of the immune system. Cashew nuts, another food that theoretically should be okay. It, has, it does have 125 omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. So again, low in sugar, high in fats, high in proteins, should sound ideal, is actually not. And it goes all the way down. Think also in terms of, um, of meat. So meat, theoretically, like should be very good when it comes to that. And it's actually, I mean, you need to pick your meat if you want to eat the, the right amount of meat in the candida journey. For example, duck meat is a 16 to 1, 6 to 3. So it's way more inflammatory than it is anti-inflammatory. And the same chicken, unless you pick very high quality, like uh, omega-3 fed chicken, which is very rare and very expensive, 
it's on average a 10 to 1 omega 3 to omega 6 ratio. So maybe take a picture of this slide here so you can have an idea. These are the worst offenders when it comes to the candida diet. Is any of these in your candida journey right now? Because if they are, you need to cut them out, even if they are low in sugar or maybe not cut them out, but reduce them dramatically. And again, take the test, please. Do not just try to guess. Invest $100 or 100 pounds, wherever you are in the world, to take that test. Because if you start from a 7 to 1, omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, it's different than you, if you are already at a 3 to 1. If you are already at a 3 to 1, then it means that your diet is overall okay in terms of inflammation. Then if you cut the sugar, the situation is going to get better. But let me tell you something. It's impossible to predict this unless you take a test. Again, I teach nutrition students basically two or three times per week, and I've been teaching them for the last five years of my life. Even to a nutrition student, which are usually people who are very dedicated into the topic of health, still you can see omega-6 to omega-3 ratio test in which they have 5 to 6 to 1. So if you've never thought about the omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, please do go and take the test. I don't earn anything about telling you this. I'm just telling you the best thing that you can do for your journey today. Let's go to the opposite and see like good ones, like good foods in which the omega-6 to omega-3 ratio is actually really good. As an example, this is a list of something like that. Let's go back to what I was saying about meat. So let's say you can exchange, as an example, duck meat with lobster, which does have a 1 to 21 omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, which means that it does have 21 times more omega-3 that it does have omega-6, which means that, as an example, lobster is a very anti-inflammatory food. You don't like lobster, you can go, for example, with ma wild mackerel. Wild mackerel, keyword here is wild, it does have an 11 to 1 omega-3 to omega-6 ratio, which means, once again, 11 times more anti-inflammatory than it is pro-inflammatory. So as you can see, look at these two different slides and maybe take a picture. There is a huge difference in the choices that you make. So let's say in the morning you want to have some porridge. And if you pick flax and chia seeds, that's an excellent choice because flax and chia seeds, they have a 1 to 4 omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. So they have four times more anti-inflammatory fats than they have the pro-inflammatory ones. On the contrary, if you were to pick poppy seeds, they have 104 to 1 omega-6 to omega-3. Okay, so this is a simple like uh, chart. These are two simple charts uh, to start to give you an idea about what you can do. They are not by any ways comprehensive, but it's something that you need to start to add. Obviously, your journey against Candida will be, com will be with many different ideas, many different videos. I have about, probably right now on the channel, about 60 videos, and they really teach you a lot about all of this topic here. But right now, my whole message here is that you must consider your fatty acid in your journey against Candida because they will make your immune system work in a much better way. So, this is all one thing that we need to consider. All of this, when it comes to your real candida plan, it goes beyond the simple advice of cutting out sugar and taking an antimicrobial. Because, again, I've just introduced one more step, and you will see that already changes the original advice that everybody gives you of cutting out sugar and taking an antimicrobial. We need to take things to the next stage. And again, the next stage is based on real science, deep understanding of the biology of the yeast. So let me show you now the references. So this page here of the references. So if you want to take a picture, go and read them. Now, let's discuss again what you learned today, because it's important. So your whole journey against Candida is to try to prevent and reduce and turn back the whole progression from yeast Candida to fungal Candida. So you want to get rid to fungal Candida and keep yeast Candida in your body. It is unclear and probably impossible to completely eradicate yeast Candida from the human body, but you shouldn't even try to do so because there is some evidence which points towards the fact that 
at least in mice, completely removing yeast candida may actually increase the bleeding because somehow it seems that candida is involved with your own friendly bacteria in the synthesis of vitamin K. And vitamin K is extremely important for the blood clotting. So this is true in mice. We don't have direct data on humans, but very often mice and humans, when it comes to, to basically studying these areas of the body, they are a good predictor. So we don't know what happens when you completely remove candida into the human body. We don't even know if it is possible, but that should not be your goal. Your goal should be to remove fungal candida from the body, get candida back into the yeast form and keep a healthy immune system so candida stays on the yeast form, which is harmless, and it may even be beneficial. So one of the ways to do that is to go and like go very deep in the way in which you treat your immune system, because the healthy immune system is the bane of the existence of candida. One parameter that you need to consider is the different impact of the fatty acid that you're having in your diet right now when it comes to your immune system. So omega-6 fatty acid, they tend to be pro-inflammatory and omega-3 fatty acid, they tend to be anti-inflammatory. So what's important here is the ratio. That doesn't mean that you should never eat omega-6, you should just eat omega-3. That's beyond what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you need to pay attention to the ratio and the ratio should be omega-6 to omega-3 less than 3 to 1. Is there anything that you can do to know how is your ratio today? Absolutely so. You can go online and order a test. Simply Google omega-6 to omega-3 ratio test. They will send you a kit. You're going to prick your finger. You're going to send the, the sample back to the lab. Usually within 15 days, you're going to have your answer. That's what we have learned today. Now, let me go to the next stage because... What we have discussed up until this point here is simply just scratching the surface because there are so many more things that need to be addressed. Again, I have introduced one more element as opposed to what the fake gurus always say to cut out sugar and take an antimicrobial, which is paramount in your journey against candida. And what I've added right now is really nothing when it comes to really take things to the next stage. So this is just scratching the surface. You need to bring everything to the next stage. So what can you do about that? I give you three different solutions. Pick the one that you desire. So in the video description, you will find a 90 minutes webinar in which I will teach you the five crucial mistakes that you're doing right now in your journey against Candida. This is a free webinar that you can find in the video description. Now, if you are already convinced about taking things to the next stage, you have two options. So these two options are already crafted by me to give you the best possible advice in your journey against Candida. The first one is my video course called Beat the Beast. You can buy Beat the Beast again in the video description. What is Beat the Beast? Beat the Beast is a seven and a half hour video course, which basically teaches you in four different parts what is Candida, what kind of challenges Candida is throwing you at you right now, what to do about that in part two, how to keep your stress under control and how to keep your candida diet in the most challenging moments of your life, such as a wedding, such as Christmas, birthday, parties, going out and so on. So Beat the Beast gives you in part one all of the steps that that candida is going to make in your body right now. And once you understand all of the biology of candida, it's three and a half hours just to explain to you the biology of candida that you need to understand. You need to understand. I'm not going to be there all the time. You need to understand what's going on in your body so you know if a specific dietary choice is sound or not. And then after I've explained all of the biology of candida, I will give you a step-by-step -step plan which is going to last for one year. What that the plan is going to teach you precisely what to do from day one to day 365 in your journey against Candida. Now, if you want something more tailor-made for you, you can boot my tailor-made um, 
strategic research, my tailor-made one-to-one consultation. Now, keep in mind that very few people qualify for that because I only want to work with people who are success hungry, people who really want to take things in their hand and simply defeat Candida once and for all. To see if you qualify, you can send an email to nicolazanettioffice at gmail.com. My assistant, Ricardo, will reply and he will qualify to see if you do qualify for my strategic tailor-made research. Everything that I just discussed can be found in the video description down below. Now that's enough for this video here. If you have enjoyed the video, please leave a like to this video here and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already. This is Nicola Zanetti signing off. Please always remember that your true health is the actual true wealth.